the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup on Fox is sponsored by JP Morgan Chase, celebrating the people who help make opportunity happen. The Moroccan celebrations continue as they should. They are the third debutante to register a victory at this FIFA Women's World Cup and the first Arab nation to get a W on this stage. Day 11 continues with the final two matches from Group A. All four teams alive, including Switzerland and co-host New Zealand, who square off in Dunedin live on Fox. At the same time in Auckland, live on FS1, Norway taking on the Philippines, who hope to extend their first World Cup campaign. Plenty of energy in that tunnel. They helped their cause by upsetting New Zealand last time out. Rob Stone coming away on a spectacular Sunday here at our home base in Campbell's Cove, located on the banks of Sydney Harbor, the iconic opera house just off my shoulder. One match already in the books today, Morocco making history with their victory over South Korea. Later on, the other two teams from Group H also in action. A second-ranked Germany battles Colombia. Up next, though, we find out which two nations will advance from Group A. Also on the way, we'll get you ready for the U.S.'s final Group E match. We find out what Megan Rapino thinks about the make or break showdown with Portugal. So an interesting start here tonight. Ada Hagerberg is walking back towards the dressing room. Where might she be going? What we're hearing from the Norwegian team doctor, Ada Hagerberg in her final sprint felt something in her groin. There's Hagerberg now, coming back out to support her teammates. And that will do it. Group A is indeed the group of chaos. Norway, the favorite coming into this tournament at the bottom with just one point. And Norway found out just moments before kickoff against the Swiss that they would be without Ada Hagerberg due to a groin injury. The former World Player of the Year out again today versus the Philippines. New Zealand counting on former Stanford captain Allie Riley for their crunch match against the Swiss. The Angel City FC star is set to make her third start of this tournament. No one in Group A has advanced. No one has been eliminated either. Switzerland certainly in the best position. They definitely move on with just a draw. A point could be good enough for New Zealand and the Philippines. Norway, they must win to have any chance at all to advance. We welcome you back inside our home here in Sydney. Rob Stone with you alongside a pair of U.S. soccer legends, Harley Lloyd and Alexi Lawless here with you. In Norway, they would call this World Cup for their women's national team a sope opera. <laughs> A soap opera, right? Drama around Hedeberg. Star Caroline Graham Hansen benched, then lashed out on a TV postgame, only to then apologize later to head coach Hega Risa. And oh, by the way, Risa under all kinds of heat back home. This is not the norm for Norway. Not at all. And I've been incredibly disappointed by this Norway squad. They've looked terrible, to be uh, completely blunt, disjointed. Um, there's clearly something that's going on in the locker room. And uh, Hege Rise was our assistant coach uh, during, you know, some of my years playing for the national team. A very reserved coach, you know, very quiet. So if she can't get a hold of this locker room, um, then out on the fields, the display is not going to be great. And so something, you know, I, I'm, I'm sniffing something that something's going on. You have an angry Graham Hansen speaking up directly after the media. Ada Hagerberg, is she really injured or is this perhaps some sort of other drama that that's happening? But this is this has been a, a complete circus. Yeah, I don't know if that's actually how you say uh soap opera but i'm gonna believe you but it doesn't matter i save the drama for your mama i'm done with this norway team on and off the field uh just just win and if they don't figure out a way tonight against the philippines to get a point then something is absolutely wrong both on and off the field and on the other side in terms of the other game new zealand come out of the shoot incredible tears and joy and everything you win that first game and then you take a step forward and then two steps back losing that second game against the philippines this is a home nation this is everything to play for for new, uh, for new zealand right now they got to get it done and they are up against it with this swiss team and, and they, the pressure lex of a nation on their shoulders hoping to elevate the sport in new zealand they had all of that energy with that opening win game two all they needed was a win over a weaker opponent to move on to the knockout stage and now they're sitting with this they let it the go. pressure. They let it go. They had it. Australia also had it. So both co-hosts 
in trouble. No co-host, no host in the Women's World Cup has ever failed to get out of the group stage. For more on the fourth all-time meeting between Switzerland and New Zealand, we take you now out to Dunedin. Check in with the pair that will call for you, the Hall of Famer, JP Delacamera, and former U.S. international, Ali Wagner. Thanks, Rob. Ali, this is the biggest night in the history of New Zealand soccer. How does this team handle the moment? Yeah, I mean, look, the first thing they have to do is take pressure off themselves. I spoke to Ali Riley last night. She admitted against the Philippines they got tight. They sensed they could get through, and that impacted their performance. They want to get back to the way they felt against Norway, and that was when they were playing for something bigger than themselves. One goal in two games. How does New Zealand beat the Swiss defense? I mean, this is an incredibly organized defense that they're up against. It's probably going to take little risk. The reality is they have to pull them out shape and that's going to require patience that's going to require change of the point of attack but ultimately highlighting the personalities that have been dangerous that's the wingers in this case hand olivia chance gets to start tonight and then of course the massive threat of wilkinson inside the 18 take advantage of that rob new zealand is hoping they click tonight and they can have a big celebration at the end of the night JP, thank you. The U.S. women's fate in Group B will be decided against Portugal, and we'll check in on the Americans' preparations for that one. We'll also hear from that lady. Well, you just saw her a second ago. She'll come up later. Megan Rapino after the break. Andy Sullivan thinks she reads a lot of books. Oh, listen here. She wakes up really early and does crossword puzzles. Mega Rapino is my teammate that blows up the group text. If you've ordered crumble cookies, you've blown up the group text. The player most likely to fall for a telemarketing scam. Honestly, me, because I've been scammed before. <laughs> the player most likely to be caught eating junk food. I don't want to call anybody out. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> Sophia Smith is eating chips all the time. The player I would most like to be stranded on a desert island with is Rose, but for no reason, just because we're usually just next to each other. <laughs> The U.S. women conclude their Group E campaign against Portugal. They only need a point to advance coverage. Monday night on the West Coast, Tuesday morning in the East, live here on Fox. And that match takes place in Auckland, New Zealand, which is also the U.S.'s home base for this opening round. And that's where we head now to check in with Jenny Taft, who's embedded with the U.S. team. The identity of the U.S. women's national team has always been one that finds a way to get it done. Earlier today, I asked veteran Megan Rapino about the mood and energy surrounding the group ahead of their crucial match against Portugal. Yeah, vibes are good. Um, obviously, there's a little bit of anxiousness anytime you have a, a sort of must-win situation. Um, there's anxiousness. It's like if you don't have that, then probably something's wrong. So I think anxiousness is good. It's like an excited vibe. I think players um, know that this is a special moment. It's like this is what you come to the World Cup for. So it's ready. There's also been plenty of criticism surrounding Vlatko and Inofsky's decision to not use more subs in the second half. At the press conference, Megan Rapinoe was asked if she should have gone in as a sub, and her answer was, of course, I think I could have helped. I believe Lynn Williams could have helped, but at the same time, I feel like everyone on the pitch was doing everything they could to create chances up until the very end. Well, she handled that tricky situation pretty well. The saying is, some teams visit pressure, but the U.S. women live in pressure. But not everyone on that U.S. roster, Carly, has seen this type of level of pressure. No, it's a young group. It's an inexperienced group. There's a couple of players like Megan Rapino, Kelly O'Hara, Alyssa Nair, um, Alex Morgan that have experienced when we've gotten into these moments in the past where our backs are up against the wall. And while the whole world may think that we're not going to get out of it, we always believe that we could. And so this group now has the opportunity to really show the world, can they do it? Can they live up to the expectation? Can they show that motivating side? If you're not motivated coming into a World Cup playing in a first match or a second match, you surely shouldn't really be at a World Cup. So it shouldn't take Lindsay Horan getting angry from a couple of tackles with one of her club teammates um, to to really bring that fire. And so this is a must win. They have to come out energized, motivated, and get the job done. This is not just the first World Cup for a, a bunch of players, 14 of the players, but this is also the first World Cup for Vlako and Donovsky. And we heard in the piece that, yeah, he's got some criticism. And I think it's fair, and I think it's right. I think in that game against the Netherlands, this team settled for 1-1. And this is a man who has been given the best car in the world and now expected to drive it and expected to win based on history. I is it easy? 
Yeah, it's easy relative to most of the other teams out there, and there's plenty of coaches that would like to be in his spot. But now he's got to make sure that he gets the job done in this third, third game, to even have a chance of winning the World Cup. So if there are going to be changes, fine. I don't think anything that we say are going to change Flacco's mind. But he's under pressure just like everybody else. And he's in a situation that he has never been in either. United States have used the same 11 for their first two games, only used one sub last one, Rose Lavelle. Coming on at halftime, she provided a great spark in the midfield. Rose has been battling some knee injuries, battling fitness issues. They do believe, though, she is 90 minutes fit. We'll see if she gets the full 90 in the next game. Today, though, we will find out which two teams will move on from Group A. Switzerland taking on the co-host New Zealand. That one in Dunedin and live on Fox. Over on FS1, Norway and Philippines from Auckland. After the break, FS1 is your home for that one.